Hello and welcome back to Conversations That Matter of thewisdomfactory.net. I'm Heidi Hörnlein and I'm here in Italy and I have a guest from South Africa who I got to know at the Integral Conference, Integral African Conference. And actually, that's the title of today. Why did you organize the Integral African Conference and why could Integral be a valuable tool for Africa, or what, how could it contribute to the situation in Africa? Actually, in the whole world, but <laughs> as your experiences in Africa. So we will talk about it. Uh, my guest, her name is Patty Pampali, and I give over to you, and you introduce a little bit uh, yourself because I have seen you, I have heard you speak, I have heard you guide to the conference, but I actually don't know a lot about you, so you might give us some information. Thank you. Um, I'm very excited to be here and thank you for the opportunity. I am speaking from Cape Town at the moment and um, I'm looking out at the back of Table Mountain from my window here. You can't see it. It's, it's no, the, but I saw it and I was up and we were there. It's, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. So very privileged to be in this country, but it is a country of huge challenges, <clears throat> like the world, I think, at the moment. Um, and why, why did I get involved in the, having a conference here? Well, I think I've been an activist right from... The word go. At school, I started a human relationship club and um, very dedicated to kind of bringing consciousness to people and making things better and trying to find out and understand why things were working the way they did. I went into education, I um, was a teacher, um, working, I majored in English and psychology, and then I pursued the psychological um, world. And in between, had a family, lived in Cyprus for two years, um, taught dance, was very interested in the body. So I've kind of done the journey through the body to the mind. And I think now a little bit more in the spirit. So kind of the adult development journey. As part of a, a being part of a teacher in, in schools, I wanted to know more. I wanted to see how we could work with adolescents and work with families more. As I said, that led me into psychology and my journey through becoming a psychologist and working as a practitioner psychologist took me through the whole developmental scale of working with infants, infant observation, play therapy, working in an adolescent unit, working with family systems um, therapy, and then doing the Tavistock training and doing organizational interventions. So kind of going through the whole spectrum. But also in a time where during the 70s at university, um, I was exposed to a lot of the 1970s violence and the anti-apartheid uh, movement, belonged to NUSAS and was part of the student um, kind of activism there against apartheid. Um, got involved in a number of things, um, partly in working cross-culturally amongst um, young, the youth, working with helping them to build the bridges between <clears throat> the white and the black um, chasms that existed through the structural system of apartheid. And um, Wanting, I think integration has been a core process, both for myself as a personal journey, but also in the world that I was living in, both in the educational world, the psychology world, and the internal world, the internal remake, and understanding what was happening around me. So I think the trajectory after doing my master's, I did a two-year integrative psychotherapy training, and went through the whole spectrum of the psychology logical theories that were available <clears throat> from Freud to transpersonal work and came across Wilbur. Mm. So that was in the early 90s, in actually 1990. And when I read the spectrum of con consciousness, I thought, oh, at last, that's most people come to integral <laughs> thinking about it. 
at last there's an explanation for how we can see this developmental system and how things are working through. Um, and I took to it enormously and um, developed, started an integrative psychotherapy and um, uh, assessment and therapy treatment center where we had an integrated team of helpers from psychiatrists to social workers working together with families, adolescents and adults. Um, started working in the leadership development um, realm as well as working in the township. So I bridged a, um, a whole spectrum myself and had to find a way to bridge the external spectrums with the internal work that I had to do on my own um, self and with people around me who were doing similar work. Um, it's, yeah, my mind goes to a center that I also established in one of the townships to work with teachers at that time in identifying the difference between educational difficulties and emotional difficulties and social difficulties and helping them cope with the societal challenges. And we had to stop the clinic again because there was too much violence and too, much pro too many protests in the, the townships and a very conflicted space, um, as you can imagine, and I'm sure you've heard stories, and um, yeah. I mean, other parts of the world have known some aspects of their own struggles. So I kept being drawn more and more towards um, Wilbur's way and going, well, how do we, if it makes sense to me, surely this is a way of helping other people to make sense. Coaching came into my, radar um, in the 1990s and I thought wow actually this is a fabulous way to kind of integrate learning and psychology and the social contribution together and I did my doctorate in executive coaching um, and then started up another center in, in Cape Town um, which was an integrated organizational development center and then very soon after started a coaching center and I, I think it was in 2005 I went over to Denver to work with um, doing the leadership that, with the Integral um, Institute to do the um, leadership development work or the leadership integral leadership work there in um, uh, with Wilbur and his team of people who belong to the early parts of the Integral Institute. Mm -hmm. And again was, you know, blown away with, gosh, this, this is such a fabulous framework. Let's bring it into South Africa. So I've been working with the Integral Framework in training of coaches and in our leadership work in organizational development. And I do a lot of work in higher education and, and government and starting to frame the integral mapping into helping people understand these systems and also working with integral coaching, helping the coaches work with looking through the perspectives and the lenses of the integral framework in, in their coaching as a support to many functions in South Africa. It's, um, I almost feel scattered sometimes in a way that uh, not knowing quite where to to go because there are just so many needs you know do you focus on education do you focus on organizational development do you focus into government so I have spread myself around this and I've got a team that works with me however it was in the working in the different sectors that I also thought sure I'd got very close to Suzanne Cook Grata and we'd started working together and I've co-talked with her in a number of areas and brought her out to South Africa um, a number of times. And in the adult leadership maturity work, um, the application of that into South Africa seemed to make incredible sense as well. And um, we just had to have a conference so I had attended the conferences in um, Sonoma in the United States and then in um, Budapest. I didn't go to the first one, but I went to the last two. And it has been a dream of mine um, to bring in a multidisciplinary approach to thinking about how do we bring 
people in higher education, in health, in business, in politics, in the media, um, in the civil service, um, into a place where they can have a dialogue and they can talk. And that was the motivation for the conference. So it was also that, but also, you know, what can Africa offer? Mm -hmm. and what are the African spirituality and African philosophies in its best rendition? Because we have seen the worst and the best um, coming from South Africa. Um, I can't talk for all the other African countries, but certainly we've had our fair share of great minds on the African um, continent. And colonialism is something that we know has had a huge impact here. So part of the freeing of the colonized mind and working with that deeply constructed divide of racism and um, separation, a way, a beautiful way for me seemed to be bringing integral theory and practice into reintegration and transformation. And, and if we could have these acupuncture points on certain parts of society, then surely the map will help. So that, that is the deep motivation. Yeah, and that's a wonderful motivation. And the conference was called Doing Human Better. And that's exactly what, what you were talking about. Now we, we find a better way to be together, first in, in your country and then in the continent and then the whole world. And I see we have really big need of finding ways to come together. Ah, yeah. But talking about the conference, uh, it was a real joy to be there. And you really got a lot of different people together. Unfortunately, you can never follow everything because there were three different tracks. Mm -hmm. I tried to go as much as I could to the African track because I, I was, had never been on that continent before. And so it was for me always, oh, far away, you know, down there. And I certainly had a lot of play prejudices uh, on it and so I was willing to learn as much as I could and the people I found there were beautiful people there really I mean incredibly powerful people black and white people and also um, brilliant in in many ways you know so brilliant minds as you said and it was really astonishing to me and also the atmosphere where how the conference was going it was a uh, we were not too many people that was good so there was a possibility to connect uh, with many more people than normally when the last Hungarian uh, conference I heard there were 700 then it's difficult to really meet each other uh, but you know in this conference you had also talking uh, at, at lunch with people or in the in the drum session in the evening and <laughs> It was really a great experience. And I think also it is moving something. Only the energy that you put in, that the people put in, it is giving a, how do you say, a, a, an energetic impulse towards making human better. And I really, really appreciate that you were doing it. Otherwise, I probably would never have come mm -hmm. to, to South Africa because alone mm -hmm. would what do I do there? But an integral conference in South Africa and a tour, which is guided and we see all the levels of development right there in, in practice. That was so intriguing for me. And so I came and I didn't regret it. Not a second, really. It was good. It was really good. So my question, oh no, you, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask, you know, what, what was that energy that you felt? First of all, a vitality, which I find I, that might be also a prejudice, but it might be what I imagine that it is what is inherent in, in black people. They have a different sort of... <sighs> You know, arriving at the airport and the, there was a band and they were already dancing everywhere. You know, this sort of joy of life, despite of all. I saw many, in many eyes, there were this sparkle, you know, which 
in our northern countries, the people look often like this, you know, desperate, oh, they are so bad off, and they are not bad off in comparison. So there is a different attitude towards life, which is expressing in an energy which I find positive. Then it can be, as it seems to be happening lately, that when this is uh, too much, yeah. and it goes into violence, probably, you know, that's, and you were talking about the violence before, that is an un, uncovered energy then, which is not good. But, but as long as it's life enhancing, this energy is beautiful, really beautiful, you know. So, and the energy in the room was of, really, how can I say, true attempt to understand each other, to come together. There was no, at least as far as I have uh, felt it, there was not a discussion against, I'm right, you are wrong, nothing of that, but trying to get the pieces together and into a, a tapestry. And that's what I really appreciate it a lot. Well, it's interesting that you say into a piece of tapestry because in, in writing about an introduction about it, I use the, you know, the puzzle, the pieces of the puzzle. Can we get the pieces of the puzzle to, to kind of create much more of a whole? And as you know, we hold it at the cradle of humankind. Mm -hmm. And there is something about, um, you know, where the, one of the first hominids were, were found. What does that say about us as humanity and, and how do we work into finding our deepest humanity? And I think a lot of people have heard of the philosophy of Ubuntu um, in the Egyptian um, uh, meaning of it, it would be called Mart. And, and that would be um, seeking the essential um, human spirit and goodness of um, or the divine microchip in the hearts of humanity that guides us. And there's, there's something around, you know, how, how have we lost so much of this? How have we, when do we lose it? What are the factors that have made us lose this connection? Um, and finding that when you express that vitality, I, I see it as a great distinction, which Interestingly enough, when we spoke to the organizers of the South American um, conference as well, there was something more than just Africa, and there is something particular about Africa, and there's something particular about South Africa that needs such incredible healing. And we have to heal ourselves. So I consider myself, I'm third generation, I consider myself an African, and at the same time, experience experiencing, sorry, I've, diverted, I've gone off a little bit. I'll come back to the South American link. Um, something of um, an experiencing in the, the, the internalized object as African is finding its way, um, how white is seen and how us as Europeans are seen when we're not separated um, from the general colonizers um, and how personally in a struggle where that was so anti who I am as a human being yet being identified with my own whiteness and Europeanness, which I don't want to ignore either because it brings you know valuable parts of me um, to the, the the table as well but there is a, a, a difference and, and there's something about the South. There's something that I think the West can learn from the South. And we spoke about that a lot at the conference. There's something about this sense of how do we go back to our deepest core of humanity in, in a simple greeting of Sayabona, which is, I see you and all that has been behind you, your ancestors and all that will come forward from you. How do we, we reignite parts of that? Um, so in that energy of vitality coming through the earth, you know, can we reconnect with the earth? Can we reconnect with mother earth? Can mother Africa, 
rather than father Europe only? And how do we find that integration? So these are the conversations. I mean, the integral mapping process is a beautiful, especially parts of the developmental mapping, but looking at the different lines of intelligence and, and looking at the different representations of how we see our own spirituality and our own humanity, whether it's through an individualistic lens or through a collective lens, what does that mean? And certainly, how can we bring those two together, which they need to be together in, in holding an essential polarity? Um, but that, that knowledge source, I think, from Africa comes through from the ground and then goes upwards. From the West, it comes down through the head center, is processed here and then goes into the body. And neither of them are better than. It's how do we access this whole the whole of us yeah yeah it's and i was thinking um we westerners northerners let's say we are coming very much from you say from above and unfortunately also from above in the sense of feeling ourselves better and i really was struck by the very first um, um talk at the conference when the gentleman talked about that it was not so the, the worst thing which um, Europe br brought was not so much colonization or extraction of the goods but it was the mindset yeah. the 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 way of thinking which has sort of superseded or even is going against the way of thinking they had. It's a mind colonialization, let's say. So if we want to find this connection, as you say now, we would need to come down from our high horse, we say in German, and see that there are other ways of thinking and perceiving the world. You know, and maybe you know, the, the, the developing countries uh, need to, to, to go in more into their mind and not, not too much into the, um, you know, into only Mother Earth. So we need to find the balance. But really, we Westerners need to come down from our idea that we are the best and we do everything right and the rest of the world has to do as we want it. I mean, I talk especially about America, but uh, <laughs> Europe <laughs> is right, right if, behind there. You're in, in, in Europe and um, with, with that mindset too. But uh, yeah, and, and you know what, what helps me so much is to not, I mean, it is interesting to see the North and the West. And I was very interested in the way you were using your hands. So, you know, the head and the, the up and the down. I mean, who in the first place said that, you know, the North Pole is on the top and the <laughs> south? <laughs> who made that distinction? I mean, if you looked at us as Earth out in the universe, you wouldn't be able to tell which is the bottom or the top. So these are false assumptions around orientating ourselves in, a, in, a, in space. And kind of the patriarchy or the masculine principle and the rational, that was something that was really damaging, that preference or the privileging of the rational mind as um, an indicator of humanity, of who was really more human and rational. And the rational mind in the Caucasian terms, um, it, you know, was, um, oh, sorry, in the Cartesian thinking was very much about that is, is the ideal. And we can see the destructive nature that mind has had over the belly and the connection to the earth and, and, the, and our the way we treat the earth. Yeah, and you know, it's not only the mind itself, but it's the, the, how it works. The, the processes and also the assumptions which are, taking, are taken for true in itself and never questions afterwards, which, uh, you know, creates all this, let's say, questionable development, you know. We might need to go back I don't think that mind in itself is bad and, and, and rational thinking, you know, but we might to go back and uh, evaluate 
our axioms, our first starting points from which we begin to think, because nobody thinks about that. Mm. It was just given, it has always been, but no, no. as we see it from geometry, as soon as the, the axioms are changed, some other geometry comes out, some other, you know, with the same thinking process. So in our normal world, it would be the same thing. And I think uh, Interra could help us to, to, to go back and see what are our assumptions, primary assumptions. <laughs> Well, perhaps I was mentioning the way you were using your hands. So you kept hovering here around the heart. And is that not the place to go? That is that not perhaps the meeting place um, where we can open up and can crack open the heart in the way of letting a light in or letting another knowingness in. So the knowledge systems are, are, are different. Um, and how can we not assume that knowledge systems of Africa are not as good? Because there were many things that worked enormously well um, in, in what was really brutalized into being called nothing and no one and um, there no identity. So in, in robbing that through a superior sense of oneself or, or a lack of understanding actually, mm -hmm. and the rational did not actually fully understand what a heart could have understood. So if there had been, and I mean, I'm just musing now, if there had been some sense of what have we cut out as a European or as a Western Northern mind, what have we cut out from our connection to the feminine, to that, that heart, to the, the womb. And, you know, I've always loved um, Suzanne's, um, in Sonoma, she spoke around the big womb. So big mind, big heart, and big womb. And how do we understand and really go back to creation and creativity as being from the soil or being through the hands or being through dance, because as you know, our Africans, <laughs> when, when, we, <laughs> when we write, we dance, when we pray, we dance, when there's a funeral, we dance, when there's a, um, a protest, there's dance. So singing and music and that kind of expression of oneself in the collective is, um, is a deep dialogic process and a deep wisdom that has been corrupted and not allowed to surface. And I think it's been a loss in the world. Yeah. Um, it is a connecting force, which yeah. we have lost. We are all separated. We need to go in the choir to, to sing together uh, something which is already given, which is already good, you know, but, but this spontaneous expression Almost nobody uh, does it anymore. When I came to Italy more than 30 years ago, still people were dancing, on, uh, yeah. singing on the streets. Yeah. They don't do it anymore. It's yeah. past. Yeah. yeah. So I suppose, you know, in, in, in what I see, it's hard to live in South Africa, and it's beautiful to live here. And you have, as you might have experienced, um, on, on every corner, you experience the full range from poverty to privilege, from exceptional education to no education, from violence to exceptional um, evidence of community work and sharing. And in the, the student rights uh, around and students were demanding um, you know free education here it was imbued with a number of other deprivations that students who come to a university project onto the university staff um, and the demands of, of many of our my black colleagues who are in positions where they are now teaching and working with 
the masses of young people who have come through a very badly designed um, educational system at the moment, that that process of the fees must fall where Ubuntu showed itself was when money didn't come through from for students to get their grants. There were students sharing their, those who got a grant would share their grants, mm. six other students to help them get food or to all live in the same room. And, you know, those are not so much the exceptions, but the norm of how that collective humanism can work. And yet, as you say, it can so easily turn into the, the edge, the divide between the expansiveness and the deprivation is so acute in this country that um, it's, it requires a lot of stamina and, and ways and means to try and work with it. Um, and there are a lot of, you know, we've had 10 years of a very corrupt um, government. So we went from a Mandela, we went through a very corrupt apartheid government to a space where there was this transformation from white and the ability to, exceptional ability to forgive from our African um, fellows. And then something in the distorted, and I can only look at it developmentally and somewhere pathologically, but when you get a corrupt um, president as we have had last, one can understand it, I can understand it from the psychological domain of if you've had an abused and deprived childhood, you can you know, either fight it or flight it or you can adapt to it in particular ways and transform yourself. If you don't, you use that same abuse to reenact it. And it certainly was reenacted um, in a very early stage of me, mine being, you know, the very opportunistic um, and perhaps diplomatic or, or group centered stage, but in its shadow. And as that shadow took hold, it was very seductive, seductive to a whole lot of people who had not had the experience of money, freedom, privilege, a whole lot of things. And seeing that fragility of the mind that really good people being corrupted quite, quite easily because of the justifications that were made yeah. um, around it's our time, it's our due. But what is really interesting for me at the moment is seeing how we can apply some of the principles of integral theory and integral application to integrate it with the Ubuntu philosophy and, and the African um, philosophies of what it takes to be an African. Um, Mbeki wrote a famous um, essay of I am an African, which I would recommend anybody reads at his prime, because he had a great intellect. He also did not have so much of the heart. So mm -hmm. his time as a president, perhaps, did not have the integration that a Mandela had in so many ways of a later stage capacity to hold many diverse principles and perspectives in the same moment and be able to take leadership at that stage. So it's it's been interesting developmentally to watch our nation and to see we're on another edge where um, I think a fairly good president is in at the helm, but it's going to take extraordinary means to kind of call on our humanity to, to come forward. And I think it's possible. But and best then, again. Yeah, and we think we are really at the at the worst end. But yeah. I think everybody sees <clears throat> their own situation as more important <laughs> than anybody else's. Also developmentally speaking, we are 
all in a, not all, but most countries, we are sort of in a setback into ecocentrism and into, you know, tribalism, strange way of tribalism. So how do you see the, the development between, let's say, Africa and Europe? We have the, oh, many, many black refugees. Italy wants to uh, make it a crime to fish them out of the water and make it a virtue that they die in the water, you know, something like that. I don't know if you have uh, heard that, that uh, the, the, um, the, the captain, female captain, uh, yeah. she forced her way into the port and she, she was accused of a war crime, something like that. But uh, she was right internationally. She got right uh, that that was what she was about, what she was needed to do. And so the ex-responsible um, and the Italian uh, who, who tried to make her a criminal. Mm. For that. So um, how can we resolve this need of people from Africa, let alone Syria? That's a, a different uh, discourse. But Africa to come over to, to Europe and, you know, they think they have a better life. In some way, probably they have, but they are always second class people, at least, if not third class people, even if they are educated, they are, you know, maybe somebody makes it to be recognized, but still, I mean, the sort of racism is there, even if it is not expressed because we are just not used in Europe to see black faces. So how can we help people to stay in their countries and have a, a life which is worth living in their countries from your experience? Sure, that's, it. it's a huge question and it goes to powers and resources and where the money is and who the leaders are. Uh, you know, there's something about having a, a common problem that brings us together. And I'm wondering whether the climate change is that common problem that may affect us all that has to bring it together. I mean, our, our issues here are real, really still basic human rights issues. And it's the Africa has to take responsibility for itself and really speak out and take ownership of its own um, presence in the world. Um, but there is there's something that the meeting of those mindsets that you spoke about have to be loosened. And if you talk just to your experience, you know, darkest Africa has been something of a myth that has been created um, in terms of the dark mind. I think there is, there's healing that has to be done in, in, in many areas around looking at what do we consider to not be us? Why are we considering any other human being as not part of us? How do we cultivate a unitive principle that I am because you are? Um, that the distinctions are superficial and they're irrelevant, actually. They are have nothing to say about intellect. They have nothing to say about humanity. They have nothing to say about who we are as human beings. They have everything to say about a bias and about um, a prejudice or a, a worldview that is biased in, in a particular way. Um, when we hear Europeans or Americans coming to South Africa and they, they still ask, you know, do we have animals roving around our street? Well, only near the safari parks, perhaps, when one or two get out. But there's this range of sophistication, as you saw, equal to the best of the world. However, the deprivation is in terms of the resources being taken out of Africa and not replaced 
with health and education in its way. And some corrupt African leaders have also played into, which I consider the early stage development. So we need more mature leaders. We need people working to a more integrative or integral kind of way of being able to think. And we need to train and, and work with those leaders who have the capacity to hold all these and to where there is a dependency to work with dependence in a particular way, but not to use that as an inferior state, state of mind, but as part of us all doing our developmental journey. So I think the frames that, that integral theory provide are, are a way to help us. I would encourage more Northerners to come and actually sit around a fire with our Africans and meet humanity. Um, meet the simple sharing that you will get. You know, there's also the story of a, a rider who, I can't remember the name, but who did, he was warned, he actually was from Italy, um, who wanted to ride from Italy over and onto the top of Africa and ride on his bicycle ride throughout to Cape Town. And he said not once was he threatened. At every stop, every space, he was given a place to stay, whether it was the most simplest place to stay, and the poorest of people would share their bread with him. So he only experienced humanity. He only experienced laughter, kids following him. Um, he never experienced violence. He didn't experience, and he went into some of the very impoverished states. So poverty does not equal violence. There is something that we don't want to look at as, as poverty. We are scared to go into um, areas that, of course, there are guns, of course, there are gangs, of course, there are a resorting to violence, but so do our well-heeled um, kids who are overprivileged in so many ways or haven't had care and nurturing resort to violence. So these are false assumptions that we have about conditions here. And... I do think there is uh, a need for leaders to be called out on letting Africa hold their own resources and be able to, to use that um, in a way of educating and health systems. I don't know, world councils, I, I, I don't know the answer, Heidi. Um, I know where we can work. The despair, I think all of us is working in, in trying to waken consciousness and healing is the despair to, to not go into the despair that this job is too big but just to keep um creating islands of of sanity islands of consciousness islands of humanity where we can and that was part of the integral conference idea is can we get an island where we can start sharing and i mean it's not start because there are other places that are doing it i'll be um yeah, very inaccurate to say it was the start of something. But can we join more with other people who are doing that to actually be the force for good? Um, media, I think, has to change its story. Yeah. Media has to represent all sides of the stories. Um, but today we have this private media, a little tiny one is what we are doing now. There are more advanced uh, channels who are distributing different news, maybe not always unbiased, but at least today is the possibility to, to hear other voices and not only the, yeah. the official media. You know, for instance, when the riots were in Johannesburg, I don't know if they're still going on, um, our journals and our news didn't say anything about it. You know, it's just, it doesn't make news enough, so it's too far away. So we, we, we need to have information systems which are more reliable and not so much politically, let's say, dominated by what, what they can say and what they cannot say. So that would be a good, a good thing. And reigniting democracy, which says the people need to have the voice, not mm. the politicians. Um, you are our servants. 
politicians are servants. You've taken a <laughs> No. <laughs> it's ridiculous because I don't see that. In no. Italy, to become a politician is to fill your, your pocket. You know? It's exactly the same here. Yeah. So there we've just destroyed one assumption about Africa or, or Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it is a developmental thing, and I think it is a maturity thing, and I think it is um, a power, power and um, a corruption of power in its worst form. And that takes us from a separation from our deepest humanity. And yeah, the world's the world's sick. The world, the, the earth is sick. So if we don't, <laughs> the irony of it is we we will exterminate ourselves or we'll wake up. Um, I'd prefer we woke up and you know, value yeah, flowers. We are we are about waking up, and I think. We women should take over in many ways and find a different way of, of leadership. I mean, there are already many uh, attempts to find out what the feminine leadership could be. We don't need women who are doing the same thing men do. But we, we need, uh, when you were talking about the heart and the womb, we need women who are courageous enough to go out and bring out these qualities together with the mind, not to, not renunciation of the mind, not at all, no. But uh, we, we, we need to have a different leadership, as you said before. And we women need to learn to show up and overcome the hesitation, overcome the, um, the need to be agreeable, the need to be seen, you know, like sweet, uh, <laughs> whatever. Heidi, if I may share just a quick story about um, someone that I was speaking with this morning who came, she's a CEO, had a dilemma about her daughter has been the subject of violence and she has just taken on a CEO position and there was a meeting um, outside of South Africa that she had to um, travel to and she was very conflicted because um, with the violence that was here recently it had triggered something. Here was a mother, an excellent woman leader, who thankfully chose to stay with her daughter because that was what was needed, but was so conflicted because of how it would be perceived to be in a particularly male-dominated environment in the board meetings that were happening all around the world. And we spoke about this very thing. Have I? Did your microphone uh, disappear? It was. Uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. We spoke about this very thing this morning about the conflict of women and how women really need to honor that creative, nurturing part of themselves, the heart that responds to a child who is in need and can say to the adults, for this moment, you can deal with yourselves, but this is where. I am needed at the moment. And when I come back to you, I can bring that humanity back into the decisions that we make. Because where else is there a microcosm of somebody hurting and suffering from some sort of trauma or needing our care? And I think until we change the rhetoric to how do we offer this duty of care to each other rather than who can have power, we won't change anything. And that, I think, is about bringing the, the healthy feminine back into how do we apply our minds to bring the heart into it and not to let this capacity of giving birth to something new be violated by an over-desire or shadow desire for power and um, resort to violence in it. Mm -hmm. So part of the spiritual journey, part of the integration of um, intelligences, part of our integration and in doing the journey, I do think that if we educate people more about this is actually our journey, let's normalize the journey rather than pathologize it. Let's continue to give people the skills to manage their developmental stages and, and bring about an integration by naming it, educating not withholding something that could liberate minds. Yeah. So 
that's the work. I think I don't have the answers. I just get up every morning and go, well, how can we do this today? Yeah, I think there are a few of us who are thinking that way and trying to do what they can do. Oh, mm. uh, yeah. <laughs> we women have to stay together and develop new ways of yes. being and in the world and standing up against uh, male predominance in a good way, you know, in a heartfelt way, without diminishing them, uh, you know, but, but making ourselves valuable. But that's the first thing, and that's the development. Our generations who, as women, were still grown up as something less, somebody less worth than men, we have to work that out in ourselves and get the self-confidence to be, as a human being, equal yeah. to, to all others. Well, the dichotomy was, was in my two adult children this week as well, where my daughter is in a corporate environment and really struggling this week with... Um, um, feeling that developmental level in a mostly male-dominated environment. Whereas during the violence and the anti-violence um, uh, and gender abuse um, protests that we had amongst others here this week, my son goes to join the anti-rape demonstration. So those are the kind of um, conditions that the, the next generations can bring in where men are standing up for women and going, we're in this together. We're not different. We have different qualities, different um, competencies, perhaps in terms of strength and um, expression of ourselves. But let those expressions be not devalued in, in gender-based or in race-based or in um, poverty or rich kind of classifications. Let us look at the hearts. Let's see into the hearts and the souls. And we can First of all, we need to do it for ourselves before we expect it from others, that they give it to us, our self-recognition. We have to do that. And that's the psychological work we need to do. Yeah. Everybody. And I think Africa has to do that as well. They have to see yeah. it for themselves again, find their expression of it by and not by turning against the north but by integrating so you can see the integral the kind of inter word integration is <laughs> integration to transformation is this yeah. yeah what i hope that is good the last question i have uh, somebody told me lately that integral theory is not applicable everywhere at the same in, in the same way because there are different uh situations in different countries and, and, and populations and whatever. What I hear you say that this is not so much the case. You can find the, the gift of integral theory and can use it for, for the country? I think you can, as long as it doesn't become um, another form of colonizing. Ah. Um, it doesn't become another form of, we have the answer. I, I like the word integration. I like the word of bringing all parts of the whole and what has been missing in the integral um, um, dialect has been what does Africa offer? What does the South offer? Um, and that has to be included in the integral dialect. It's not the theory that is um, so much uh, lagging in, in adapt or being adaptable to it, I think it's more that the conversation needs to come in and be brought in around um, validating all perspectives. If we're really saying we're integral, then we need to be able to say as a world, you know, how do we integrate all the perspectives and honor what each perspective brings? Because until we do that, we can't be integrated. So until we make Africa or America, the South Americans or the Mexicans or any of these um, less or the Chinese or whatever it is, until we make, you know, until we see that we're not less, we're different um, 
different renditions of humanity and all make up the whole. So what I hear you say is more <laughs> that the eye of um, the understanding of who is using uh, the tool is the importance and the tool itself is giving all the opportunity, but the people who are maybe thinking they're integral, but maybe there's some piece of integral perspectives missing, let's say. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I do feel that, yeah. We have a way through the collective quadrants. You know, what is it is to be, because Ubuntu and the African collective experience is very powerful. And if we can work with the, the best parts of how to live together, um, we may learn a lot. Yeah, and we don't know that anymore in the Western world, how to live together. So, yeah. yeah. So the quintessence is we need to learn to become human again. Do human Make do, do human better, exactly. Oh, Patty, that was a beautiful conversation. I thank you for your beautiful feminine way of presenting what you need to say, what you want to say. It's wonderful. And I'm delighted to get to know you a little better. <laughs> I, I just did not have time in holding all the things that were there. No, you were so busy. <laughs> busy, horrible. It, it was true. Uh, <laughs> you had a huge uh, responsibility to keeping everything going and it went beautifully but we will meet in Hungary next year and so we will connect better before we stop uh, could you tell people how they can reach you what your website is and whatever uh, whatever information and please send it also to me so I will uh, publish it under the video okay. well it is we, we've had an interesting thing. We, we are actually known as the Integral Coaching Center. And um, I run the Integral Institute as well, which we're starting to develop here. But we, um, <laughs> it's a long story. We are actually on the website of www.coachingcenter.co.za. And um, you'll see us as Integral Africa. And of course, the... Um, conference website is is up as um so i will send those both to you to post yeah, okay wonderful yeah. and thank i'm you. looking forward to meeting you in person again and thank you very much and you i will come and visit that's good and i think what you did today you gave us um a note of hope and inspiration thank what you. the future can be so it, often people see it everything dark but mm. it was a light in the darkness thank you very much thank you. <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate it.